Think of something so big, it can only happen with God. Jay Sekulow of the American Center for Law and Justice believes that was one of the keys to my father's life and legacy. Well, from humble beginnings, the ACLJ became a global force dedicated to protecting the rights of Christians everywhere. Gary Lane spoke with Jay about Pat's vision for religious freedom and his belief in the art of the possible. More than three decades ago, Pat Robertson received a divinely inspired vision to establish a legal center to defend the rights of Christians. City after city, county after county, state after state, we've been robbed of our religious rights and it's time to say no more. Attorney Jay Sekulo recalls the day Pat asked him to head up the American Center for Law and Justice. I'll never forget our first meeting in Chesapeake, Virginia at the Holiday Inn. Oh, back in 1990, I think. It may have been even 89. And the idea was his, uh, obviously inspired by the Lord, to put together resources that would enable a legal organization like ours to flourish here in the United States and around the world. And he was always a source of great encouragement and wisdom. I, I can't say enough. This is a guy that is was our mentor, our friend, and our colleague. As an educated lawyer, Pat Robertson followed various legal decisions and became an avid Supreme Court watcher. Sekulow explains Pat's excitement when he learned the court in effect struck down Roe versus Wade. He was thrilled to remember that the first case that Justice Alito cited in the opinion was a case that he was at the argument for that I made at the Supreme Court of the United States in 1992 and 93. It was argued twice. The, the recognition of that achievement of the overturning of Roe and that it's a case based on a case that the ACLJ litigated at the Supreme Court, I think was a tremendous source of pride for him in, and pride in the right way that the vision that he had for this organization uh, from the beginning has uh, continued. Pat's commitment to religious rights expanded to a global scale when he started the European Center for Law and Justice. I remember exactly where I was standing in 1997 in Strasbourg, France where we, I went to look at office space for an organization we wanted to form that Pat and I had talked about forming. He viewed religious freedom as a God-given inalienable right, not based just on a constitution or a declaration of universal rights, but as a God-given right. And that is what the motivating factor was that ended up forming the European Center for Law and Justice, which of course handles cases literally throughout Europe. And Jay, how about you personally? How did he change you? For me personally, I learned from him the the art of the possible. And I think that's what will stick with me through all of this. And don't limit what God is is seeking to do and don't put it in a box. He used to use a quote from Winston Churchill and a couple of others saying, you know, you stood up for something. And this was a Winston Churchill quote. Uh, and you got attacked for it. Good. It means you stood up for something. And he just was a tremendous source of encouragement. And uh, I remember that statement uh in the dressing room at CBN, Gary, you've seen it too, of course. And it's, you know, think of something so big that it can only happen with God. And that is, that's his life, that's his legacy, and I think that's what he imparted to all of us. Amazing legacy, amazing history. Uh, how many things have happened because God spoke to my father and my father said yes. Abraham, amen to God. A Abraham did that, and it uh, was accounted to him for righteousness. May my father's memory be a blessing to you today.